There are many out there that say that the God of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah, is actually Satan the Devil. But we'll look at that some other day. But today, I'd like to show you how the Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses is actually Satan the Devil. Let me show you what I mean. So first, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 and 4. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. So the congregation of Corinth here was accepting people who were bringing a different Jesus, a different spirit, a different doctrine. And Paul had to warn them that they could not be doing this. And notice he said, just as Eve was deceived by the serpent. The serpent, we know, is Satan the devil. And Eve didn't know that the serpent was Satan. She thought it was a snake, but actually it was Satan the devil. And he says, just as Eve was deceived, you too are being deceived by this other Jesus. The Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, the New World Translation, is known for getting many things wrong. For instance, John 1.1, 1, 1, where they say, the Word was in the beginning, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So what they're saying here is Jesus was a God, and then they also say Jehovah was a God, so they have multiple gods. But if you talk to a Jehovah's Witness about this, they will say how other in the Bible were referred to as gods. And they are correct because, like, Jesus referred to the Pharisees as being called gods. It just means that they are a great judge or, or have great power. So the Jehovah's Witnesses will say John 1.1 1, 1 just means he has great power or great authority. Now, that really is a cop-out. But, as we know, like, in the Bible, God said there was only one God. There can't be more than me. There's only one God. So any other gods would be false gods. Even if they did refer to a person as a god, that still would be a false god. But for the sake of argument, let's just give that to them. Okay, for it's all right. We'll just give that to them for now. So let's look at the Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus, and see what he, what he is. Because if we can take the root of a doctrine and show that it is evil or wrong, then the whole tree will die. So let's go ahead and look at that. And this is from JW.org. It is, Who is Michael the Archangel? The spirit creature called Michael is not mentioned often in the Bible. However, when he is referred to, he is in action. In the book of Daniel, Michael is battling wicked angels. In the letter of Jude, he is disputing with Satan. And in Revelation, he is waging war with the devil and his demons. By defending Jehovah's rulership and fighting God's enemies, Michael lives up to the meaning of his name, who is like God? But who is Michael? At times, individuals are known by more than one name. For example, the patriarch Jacob is also known as Israel, and the apostle Peter is Simon. Likewise, the Bible indicates that Michael is another name for Jesus Christ, before and after his life on earth. Let us consider scriptural reasons for drawing that conclusion. Archangel God's word refers to Michael the Archangel. This term means chief angel. Notice that Michael is called the archangel. This suggests that there is only one such angel. In fact, the term archangel occurs in the Bible only in the singular, never in the plural. Moreover, Jesus is linked with the office of archangel. Regarding the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 states, The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a commanding call, with an archangel's voice. Thus, the voice of Jesus is described as being that of an archangel. This scripture therefore suggests that Jesus himself is the archangel Michael. Army leader. The Bible states that Michael and his angels battled with the dragon and its angels. 
Thus, Michael is the leader of an army of faithful angels. Revelation also describes Jesus as the leader of an army of faithful angels. And the Apostle Paul specifically mentions the Lord Jesus and his powerful angels. So the Bible speaks of both Michael and his angels and Jesus' his angels. Since God's word nowhere indicates that there are two armies of faithful angels in heaven, one headed by Michael and one headed by Jesus, it is logical to conclude that Michael is none other than Jesus Christ in his heavenly role. So there are some big problems here, to say the least, but let's address this first one that they argue. Now, in their first argument, they refer to First Thessalonians, where they say Jesus had an archangel call. But this does not mean that Jesus was an archangel. This is the same as saying, she roared like a lion. Does that mean that the woman is a lion? No, it means she roared like a lion. It's the same as... Jesus yelled with an archangel's voice. It says it doesn't mean that he is an archangel. And their second argument here is that Michael, the archangel, has he he has a, his own angels, and Jesus Christ has his own angels. And that because in the Bible, it never says that there are two different armies of angels, then Jesus must be Michael. But that is grasping at straws. That is ridiculous. There are a lot of things in that the Bible does not talk about it doesn't mean that they don't exist uh, so that's really not relevant but let's just say for the sake of this argument let's just go ahead and say they're right okay just for a little bit let's say okay so jesus is an angel so if jesus is an angel then why isn't he acting like an angel so let us look at how angels act and see if jesus acts like angels we're going to see their argument to its logical conclusion and see what happens. So let's look at the Bible for this. We'll go to Revelation 19, verse 10. It says, At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. So John here saw an angel, and he fell at his feet to worship him. But the angel said, no, no, don't do that. Then also at Revelation 22, 8 and 9, it says, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with, with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. So here again, John tried to worship at the feet of an angel, and the angel said, no, no, don't do that. You don't worship angels, you worship God. So as we see from these scriptures, angels do not accept worship. But the problem is, Jesus did accept worship. Jesus, he allowed people to worship him. But these angels, they said, no, no, don't do that. Worship God alone. Now, of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, well, Worshipping, you know, that can mean like giving respect or, you know, or, or prescaneo, o obeisance to, because they've changed it, their Bibles changed the word from worship, even though obeisance is the same exact word as worship. But that is a very weak argument, and Joe's Witnesses know that in their Bible it says, do not worship any other gods, they only are to worship the, the one God, Jehovah. Let's look at Matthew 28, 9. It says, Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. So you can see here that the apostles grabbed his feet and worshipped him. Now the Living Translation says, And they grabbed his feet and worshipped him. The English Standard Version says, Then they took hold of his feet and worshipped him. The Berean Standard Bible says that they grasped his feet and worshipped him. And it goes on and on. Every Bible except for the New World Translation, they all say worshipped him. Now the New World Translation says, And look, Jesus met them and said, Good day. They approached and took hold of his feet and did obeisance to him. Then it has a little asterisk right there. And if you push on it, it says, Or bowed down. I did a video on this before. Obeisance, if you look it up in the uh, dictionary, it is the same as worship. They just put that in there, so don't think Jesus is God. And then Matthew 21, verse 8 and 9 says, A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. 
The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So as we see, Jesus did not say, hey, no, don't do that. Stop, don't. No, he let these people worship him. Then also in John twenty twenty four through 28, it says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. So we see he didn't, No, no, don't call me that. Or he didn't tell his people, No, stop. He let people worship him. Unlike the angels who told people, Do not worship me. So as we see this, debunks the Joe's Witness argument because the angels, whenever someone tried to worship them, they said, no, stop, don't do that, worship God. But when people worshiped Jesus, he welcomed it. He didn't say anything about it. He let them do it. He let them call him Lord, and my God. He, he allowed worship, though Jesus cannot be an angel. But what about the claim I made at the beginning of the video where I say that Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus, is actually Satan or Lucifer or the devil, whatever you want to call him. Well, let's look at Satan, the devil, and see how he acts. What, you know, like we looked at the angels, well, let's look at Satan. Let's look at Isaiah fourteen twelve. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So see, Lucifer wanted to be like God and ascend into the uh, heavens and have his kingdom above God. He wanted the praise, he wanted the exaltation, and he was an angel. Now, <clears throat> Matthew 4, verse 8, again the devil took him, he's talking about Jesus, to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him. Now, see, the devil, he wanted Jesus, he went even to the Son of God and said, Worship me. See, the devil, he, he wanted people to worship him. He was an angel, but he wanted to be worshipped. Now, the Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses is an angel, but he allows people to worship him. So, there, Jesus is an angel, but he allows people to worship him. Now, yes, he did point to the Father, as the Jehovah's Witnesses will say. But still, he allowed people to worship him. And the angels do not allow people to worship them. But this Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses, who is an angel, he does allow people to worship him. What angels do accept worship? What angels do want to be exalted? What angels want to be lifted up and, and people praise them? Well, Satan did. He wanted to be his kingdom to be above God. He wanted to be better than God. He, he went to the Son of God and said, I will give you all these kingdoms if you bow down and worship me. He, he, he's an attention hog. He wanted to be worshipped. And that's why the Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses is Lucifer, Satan the devil. Because no angel wants worship except for him. But let's just put all this aside for a minute and say that everything is okay again. Everything's good with their argument. There is still one big problem, and we need to look to the Bible one more time at one more verse. So let's read Colossians 2.18, and it says, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. 
The New Living Translation says, Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels. And the English Standard Version says, Let no one disqualify you, insisting on ascetism and worship of angels. In Colossians 2.18, we are warned, Do not worship angels, because this disqualifies you. You are done. The Bible clearly says, Do not worship angels. So, bringing this up to a Jehovah's Witness they'd probably have a hard time giving you an answer. Michael the Archangel is an angel, and angels do not accept worship. If you worship angels, according to Colossians 2, you disqualify yourself. You are not supposed to worship angels. I am not supposed to worship angels. Jesus is the one who is worthy of worship. He is the one who died for our sins. He's the one who makes a way to the Father. It's all about Jesus, not about angels. Angels who demand attention and demand worship are demonic. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, he's the angel who wants people to worship him. We already went through that. But real angels, according to Revelation 22, do not accept worship. So you might want to bring that up to a Jehovah's Witness out there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this helps somebody. Bye everyone. Thank you for watching.